traders increase their bets on a September rate cut, but has inflation really turned a corner? Welcome to Market Insight, I'm Elena Casas. On Friday, traders ramped up bets on a September rate cut after the Fed's preferred measure of inflation, the PCE price index, came in in line with expectations, although core PCE was still stuck above target at 2.8%. So has inflation really turned a corner? Let's ask Victoria Bills, Chief Investment Strategist at Banrian Capital Management. Victoria, when we last spoke, you thought the Fed might not be able to cut at all this year, if I remember rightly. How do you feel now? So thanks for having me first off. And I think that there are some indicators in the market right now, especially when we're looking at PCE and particularly CPI, that are pointing towards the potentiality of a rate cut, but it's definitely more into more in alignment with future projections for September. However, we did see the PPI number coming in and it was a little bit stronger than I think for expectations. But at the overall, I would say that we're seeing very strong market indicators that there is a high potentiality for a cut. A lot of what I was saying earlier in the year when I was mentioning that there was potentiality of a market, like potentially a rate increase was because inflation has continued to remain sticky. And we still are seeing a lot of those sticky indicators, but I think that, again, a lot of those um, projections are coming back into alignment with what the Fed wants. And therefore, we're going to probably see, as hopefully as things continue to cool down, a move towards a rate cut in the future. We're starting a new month, Victoria, with some very high valuations after a strong May. Can the market sustain this kind of level or do you expect to see a cooling off this summer? I think market valuations, like we said, continue to be very high. And we're seeing a lot of equity traders trying very hard to find value and find gems in the market, especially if we're looking at small cap stocks. A lot of them have been, I would say, highly overvalued over the past few months, perhaps even the past couple of years. And what really helps to differentiate, I would say, companies over the long run or what really is helping um, traders and folks find um, value in the markets overall is whether we're talking about factor or even actively managed funds. So some of the things that we're actually looking at right now is um, actively managed um, alternative investment vehicles, but also looking at, act looking at actively managed even small cap portfolios, which have tended to outperform even the S&P ETFs that are out there. We've been seeing again in recent weeks bond yields moving the stock market. I know that you think that means investors should be adjusting their portfolio. Tell me about that. I think it's, def it's definitely an opportunity. In terms of like how we should be, how they should be thinking about yield spreads and how we should be thinking about bonds. Again, if we're considering a rate cut coming into the future, there's that is definitely going to impact a lot of the bond markets that we're seeing. But as rates are continuing to, I would say, stay relatively high, I think that there's still potentiality for that argument for a more um, high yield or even like a high mark, like a bond based portfolio especially like just given the rate payouts that we're seeing to, as of to date. However, again, like factoring in for a potentiality of a rate cut or even if rates continue to remain the same, then maybe moving into potentially more alternative investment vehicles, whether that's, again, thinking about like MRSK or um, QIS or um, a alternative, alternative, quite literally, investment strategy that will differentiate from like a traditional bond slash stock portfolio, 60-40 portfolio. We can't ignore, Victoria, that now we're just five months out from an election. Are investors bracing for coming volatility around the campaign, do you think? I think that's definitely a factor. What we're seeing right now, especially whether that's through the Fed and their monetary policies, um, they're actually cutting their balance sheet, I believe it was from 64 to almost 24 billion right now. And so that's going to leave room for a Biden administration and even for a potential um, Trump administration to come in and enact some of their more fiscal policies that we've been seeing. So uh, Biden, in this case, if we're hedging our bets on him, has um, increased tariffs around Chinese EV vehicles. We've been seeing a lot of push in terms of student um, loan forgiveness and renew renewals of those programs. And so even if a Trump administration comes in, then we can expect some additional spending to come in as well based off of some of the policies that we saw in the past from Trump. 
So overall, I think that a lot of what we're going to see is that, again, that um, in decrease in terms of the what the Fed is doing, but an increase in terms of what government is going to be doing in terms of trying to stimulate the economy. Hopefully not too much, but perhaps in balance with each other. Victoria Bills of Banrian Capital Management, thank you so much for that analysis. Well, that's your Market Insight. Don't forget, you can watch more videos on Reuters.com.